Man, where is that one fire open I made for today? Oh, there it is. 1010XL 92.5 FM presents Jaguars Today with your host Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, David Garrard, and E to the T. Yep, let's get this show on the road. Damn, E. Wow, that is cold <laughs> as hell, man. What on earth? <laughs> Holy smokes. He went into the lab and came up with that. That was the open? <laughs> that was the open. That's what you got. <laughs> well, show on the road. his performance matched <laughs> the Jaguars' performance uh, yesterday, uh, where the word of the day was embarrassing. You heard it from Doug Peterson in the postgame. You heard it from Trevor Lawrence. You heard it from Josh Allen. You probably heard it from many more. Yesterday, yeah, it was embarrassing as hell. Probably anyone that was willing to talk to you about Jaguars football after the game. And be honest about that situation, Dave. I mean, uh, David Garrard here, Fat Tony, Mike Dempsey. Welcome into Jaguars today. E.T. in there. He's got a little extra time on his hands, I think, this morning. (laughs) (laughs) The way things worked out. Uh, Dave, they, they hyped it internally. Didn't talk about this externally, but internally as a playoff game. Because... If they win that game and everything else happens, and we had a pretty good you know, feeling that Philadelphia might take care of business with Tennessee, you find yourself two games out with two head-to-head games still to go against your division rival. Uh, for the fact that they actually felt like they had a little something on the line in early December, how disappointing was the not showing up at all yesterday? Yeah, well, I mean, I hyped this game for myself. I thought, okay, we're coming off a great win, a great comeback by our QB. He's on fire. The team is, like, ascending. And then there was a cliff, and that cliff was yesterday against the Detroit Lions. And it they just fell off the map. I don't even know what to, like – digest from that game to regurgitate back out to the fans to be like, well, you know what? Here's some positivity. No. Here. I, I don't have any of that. I don't have anything to comfort anybody. You need to go get your blanket, the comfy blanket. That's the only thing right now that will comfort you because your Jags are not doing it for you. Uh, I mean, Tony, the defense was obviously miserable when you allow scores on every competitive drive that the Lions had. When they decided to take a knee at the end of the game, that's almost worse. Yeah. Right? Like, we're taking mercy on you <sighs> at the professional level. I I, I stopped watching that. at that point, so I don't even know what they did. I understand, <laughs> and I don't blame you. I was contractually <laughs> obligated to sit there and soak it all in. <laughs> but I, I, what I think it does, and I talked about this on the post game yesterday, is it, it disguises – the fact that this offense only put up 14 against the Detroit team that's very gettable as well. Now, the defense was worse, but this was a complete failure across the board yesterday. Oh, for sure. And it started with the ETN fumble on the opening possession. And look, I can understand Jaguars fans watching that moment and saying, well, I've seen this how many times, right, with this football team. But I have to remind myself coming out of the game, those are the same 53 that came back against Baltimore. Yeah. It's the same 53 that came back against the Raiders. It is a team that this year in the last month has shown you this doesn't mean we're dead, right? Like we've seen that kind of moment from this team and it hasn't meant they're dead this season. Yesterday, for whatever reason, it killed them. Like that moment in that game, there was nothing. They were dead and it was, it's so disappointing for it to be a game that you're talking about for a week we got to treat this like a playoff game. We got to play this like a playoff game. Meaningful football in December for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's been five years since we've seen any of that for this football team. And for the effort on both sides of the ball to be what it was. Uh, and thank goodness that Trevor Lawrence was able to come back in the second yeah. half of that game because yesterday was a disaster. It could have been, I mean, I don't even know what word you would describe if Trevor Lawrence was actually as hurt as he looked like he might have been on that play at the end of the half. Yeah, I definitely swallowed and, and could not get anything down at that moment. Like, my mouth went so dry, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is the only thing we don't want to happen in this game really is for our QB to be hurt. But, Tony, going back to what you were saying about just it's a playoff game in their minds, but this is what it looks like when you have a team that has very few people on the team that have been in the playoffs, especially with this team. Mm -hmm. It's just they don't know what that looks like, so they don't know how to rise up, to game plan, to be ready, to get out there. And even when you have a mistake at the beginning of the game, like you said, we have a team that has shown they can come back. They can still overcome those mistakes. But for whatever reason in this game, 
They could not overcome. They could not put things together. The defense just did not get off the bus. They're still on the bus. They're still on the plane. What, what, what happened to that fire, that angriness that we saw against the Ravens? Like, they didn't give us any of that. And once again, the pass rush was non Exists. Oh, that is a huge ongoing problem. There's no question about that. You know, Dave, it, it's more, it's, they haven't always been able to overcome, right? But they've always been able to make it competitive. Yeah, yeah. And, and they've never had that happen to yeah. them. Never this folded. Year. No. Never folded, never yeah. got pushed around to that degree. Now, other teams have scored a lot of points, but yeah. generally they've answered or they've made enough big plays or maybe they moved it between the 20s and they tightened up in the red zone or whatever. Yesterday was a complete failure. And, to hear Doug Peterson in the post game, and we'll bring some of his comments uh, to the show today, basically saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, that you got to forget last week. Like, that was great. You can't get caught up in the, hey, we've arrived kind of thing. And again, this is a paraphrase, but it made me wonder what did he see and did he see that attitude throughout the course of the week? I find it hard to believe that a team that has been so matter of fact all year long, like last week, when they win the game, everyone's thrilled. They're excited. Foye Luikin is saying in the locker room, hey, it's nice. We're happy we won, yeah. but let's calm down. I thought that's a great sign, right? They're not getting too wrapped up in the emotion of the moment. They know that there's more business to attend to. And then to hear their head coach say yesterday that, you know, we got to realize we haven't done anything just because we won last week. It's a whole new season. Makes me wonder what he saw in terms of preparation or attitude or whatever throughout the course of the week. Yeah, I'm sure. And, and just thinking about it, being in that locker room before, I'm sure in my mind they were given all the right things on interviews and all that kind of stuff. But I bet the atmosphere was a little different at practice. Oh, we're going to get those. Lines. Oh, yeah. I'm sure the music was a little, a little louder. They Guys had coming, a little Dave. bit more energy. They were, you know, not saying that they weren't focusing on their task, but you can enjoy your locker room time a little bit more when the guys come in to interview you. You might straighten up a little bit, but then you go back to enjoying the music that's playing in the locker room and, hey, where are we going to eat tonight and all this because you're flying high. We just beat the Ravens. Great game, great comeback, all that good stuff. And then you get out there and you're telling everybody it's a playoff game. Well, doggone it, it sure did not look like yeah, a uh, playoff game. They, there are a lot of issues here, and – the one thing you had as a Jaguar fan is that this team didn't have that quit in them, that they were competitive week in, week out, that, you know, the, the hope that, and look, maybe this turns out to be the one outlier game. It just came at the absolute worst time yeah. when you actually kind of pulled some of your fan base back in and convinced them that there are meaningful games to be played in this month coming up. Look, I get it. They're not mathematically eliminated. You needed to have that one yesterday, and not only did they not have it, they didn't have a shot no. at it. So we'll discuss that today.